A big step backwards for civil rights in the news recently as Indiana has passed a law that allows restaurants and other business owners to turn away homosexuals and deny them service as well as members of other religions. Lawmakers claim that this is to protect the religious freedom of restaurant owners, but fails to elaborate on how members of the LBGT community eating in their restaurants treads on their rights to religious freedom. Indiana is already being attacked by many across the country, but this act has also opened up other states to attempt to follow suit. Even the NCAA, which holds its championship games in Indianapolis, has denied any affiliation with the law and is now considering moving their locations somewhere else to avoid controversy. Aaron Hernandez was found guilty of murder of Odin Lloyd, a 27-year-old semi-professional football player who was dating Hernandez's fiance. Jury found him guilty of first degree murder and acting with extreme atrocity and cruelty. The Tennessee House votes to make the Bible the official state book of Tennessee. Despite controversy and resistance from Republicans, some find it disrespectful, quoting, To kill a mock mockingbird is a book. The Bible is a word of God. It's on a whole different level, said Representative Patsy Hazelwood. Now over to Kelsey with your Charger Nation weather. It's raining, it's pouring, the old man is snoring. He went to bed and bumped his head, couldn't get up in the morning. Charger Nation, I'm Kelsey and this is your weekly weather. Today the high will be 65 degrees and the low will be 48 degrees. There will be a 10% chance of rain today also. Tomorrow the high will be 59 degrees and the low will be 43 degrees with a 90% chance of scattered showers. On Sunday it will be sunny and 66 degrees and the low will be 46 degrees with a 10% chance of rain. Overall this week will be warm with some possible showers. Enjoy your weekend Chargers. Hey Charger Nation, sophomore Sebastian Kaufman has been selected to attend the Craft Academy for Excellence in Science and Mathematics at Moorhead State University. The Craft Academy for Excellence in Science and Mathematics is a dual credit residential high school for academically exceptional Kentucky students. The Academy will be housed on the campus of Moorhead State University. They will be focusing on math and science courses while also being involved in arts and humanities electives. Sebastian is one of 60 high school students in Kentucky that have been chosen to participate in this unique opportunity. Congratulations, Sebastian. The advanced choir performed at the KMEA scoring last week, and after spending a lot of time practicing, they have received a distinguished rating, and they did an amazing job on their sight reading performances. They sang True Light and an Ad Vernon Corpus, and Way to Go Charlie. It's no secret that Bullet East is home of some amazing musicians, but only a few have the will, power, and tendency to take it to the next level. Over the next couple of weeks, the Field Report will be sitting down with some graduates of Bullet East that have gone on to be big stars in the music business. Hey guys, I'm Isaac Bird, and I'm here with uh, Alex Hemer and Philip Bullock of Forgetting Scarlet, uh, and we're going to be asking them a few questions about their band. So uh, just give us a little short information about your band. Well, the style of music we play, I guess, first off, is called pop punk. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's like what Blink-182 started back in the 90s and early 2000s and then now it's developed into something similar to what we play. And are you guys currently on tour? We're not currently on tour, but we do have a couple of tours lined up this summer and then there could be more stuff next year. Just wait and find out. Do you guys have any locations set up? Uh, well, one this summer we're going to do with our friends in a band called Cosmic Foxes. We're listen be, to them too. Yeah, listen to them. Uh, it's going to be touring a couple of college campuses. We're gonna go from here to Lexington, then West Virginia and Nashville, and then hit WKU and a few other ones on the way back up to Louisville and end it on a night in Louisville. All right, and uh, do you guys have any uh, close shows coming up that students could attend? Uh, there's one Friday and then sort of uh, in May, there'll be uh, several in May we've already got planned but we can't announce yet just because there's a couple bigger bands on it that it has to wait to be announced, and then in June we'll have a few too. Was there uh, anyone here or anything here at Bullet East that inspired your music? N no one really at Bullet East specifically, but having Cody Ash as like my first friend in high school was really a good kickstart. I saw his band play uh, when I was a sophomore with Alex Thomas, and from then on I was like, that's what I want to do, for sure. Have you guys released any music that is available for purchase by students? Yes. You can actually buy it. 
Yes, you have to buy it. <laughs> Don't pirate it because that's wrong. You can uh, uh, buy it off. Is it still on Bandcamp? It's on uh, the EP that we just released it's called Hello My Name Is, and it's on iTunes and Bandcamp. And do you guys have any backup plans in case of a possible fallout of the band? No, we're going to be famous. <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, yeah, if something doesn't go right with the band and we just end up not working out or we flop, then I'm planning on going back to school, and I'll probably either do something with education or with music production. All right, and do you guys have any funny moments that you can remember from, uh, from being in the band? Well, none that we can really share on a high school <laughs> camera, but, yeah, there's definitely a lot of fun that goes on when the band gets together, that's for sure. All right, and are you guys currently in contact with any record labels? Yes, we yes. recently got signed to a label called Maui Tribe. Uh, they're based in California and Hawaii. In Maui. In Maui, yeah. All right, and last but not least, do you guys have any advice for students here at Boldies that may want to follow in your footsteps of being in a band? Uh, definitely. Like, if you have a passion for music and you think that's what you're meant to do, just do it. Don't let anybody tell you that you're not good enough or that you can't do it because, really, the only person that matters is you in that situation. If you think you're good enough, if you think you can make it, then just put everything you've got into it and you can do it. A big thanks to Alex Heimer and Philip Bullock of Forgetting Scarlet. And tune in next week for an exclusive interview with Cody Ash of O Kingdom. Back to you guys. <laughs> Jay's on my feet, Jay's on my feet. Jay's on my feet. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this week's Plugged In. This week, we are going to focus on two topics the new release of Mortal Kombat 10 and the new Fast and Furious movie. First, let's talk about the Fast and Furious. This movie had a lot of hype going into the release. A lot of people say that it might be the last film in the franchise due to the death of Paul Walker, who filled a major role in the series. Talk and interviews from actors say otherwise. They say there will be more Fast and Furious movies to come, but how many more? We don't know. The movie is action-packed, and with some of the craziest stunts and chase scenes we have ever seen in any of the movies before, which is what Fast and Furious movies are known for. As for the ending, no spoilers, but you should probably bring some tissues. And that's not just for the ladies. Guys, beware. I've heard many bro horror stories of alligator tears. I have asked the guys around the studio what they thought of the movie, and they all seem to like it a lot. I personally have not seen it, but definitely plan to sometime in the future. I suggest you all head up to Keystone Cinemas and grab a seat to see Furious 7 soon. If racing and action doesn't wet your appetite, then surely the gratuitous violence and gory mayhem of Mortal Kombat 10 will get your blood flowing. Mortal Kombat 10 is the next installment to the Mortal Kombat series that was rebooted a few years ago. The game has always been known for sparking controversy for its intense gore and violence. It is also known for finishing off your enemy in a very violently gory fashion known as a fatality. The game consists of several new characters including Cassie Cage, Jackie Briggs, and Kung Jin, just to name a few. There are also bonus characters available on DLC, which includes characters such as Predator, Jason Voorhees, Trimmer, and Tanya. New to the series, players can use the environment on which they're playing to further dominate your opponent by throwing them into objects or using various objects as weapons. My personal favorite character is Scorpion because he's obviously the coolest, he's got a head of flames. But I also like to play as Johnny Cage. Whoever your favorite character is, I'm sure they're in this game. After you complete the game and story mode, all the credits will appear, but that is not the end of the game. Blake Schweitzer, who have lived on nothing but Cheetos and Red Bull for 40 straight hours, beat the game and said to be sure to watch all of the credits. There is a twist, and it is huge. All I can say is, get ready for a sequel. Here is a plugged in exclusive trailer of the upcoming Star Wars movie, The Force Awakens. My 
sister has it. You have that power too.